Hello Steelers and welcome to this painting video of these German combat patrol markers for the game O Group. Although these are combat patrols you can use any of the techniques in this video for any tabletop 15mm German Second World War figures. They're not Golden Demon winners, they are gaming pieces and I'm adhering here to the 3 foot rule. If you want to add more detail than I do then feel free, but these should work perfectly well for any tabletop battle. They're also very quick to paint. The figures are from Battlefront and there's some spares that I had knocking about and I just wanted to use them to make my combat patrol markers a little bit more interesting. Whilst the figures were still on their sprues I painted them with a rattle cam primer and let them dry. Once they were dry I then used a sharp hobby knife to cut them off their sprues. Then with the side of the blade I cleaned off any mould lines that I could see, especially on the tops of the helmets because that's quite obvious. I then super glued the figures in place on a 2 inch diameter MDF base which I'd bought from war bases. Once the super glue was dry I began the first step of block painting. This is using Vallejo's German World War II Field Grey. I'll put a list of all the paints I use in the description below with an Amazon affiliate link which gives me a little bit of money from any of the sales. You can see here that I'm using a big brush and applying this roughly, making sure I cover all the tunic and the trousers. This may look sloppy, and it is, but it is also fast, and I've never had an issue with adding more paint on other areas later. If you want to be more neat and just hit the tunic and trousers, do so, but it is going to take you a little bit longer. I let the uniforms dry, and then I started on some of the detailing, beginning with the flesh. This was just Vallejo's sunny skin tone, applied with a very small brush. The neater you are here the better, as it means you just won't have to go back later and rectify any mistakes that you've made. However, don't worry if you do make mistakes though, it's quite a nice quick fix with the uniform colour just later on. The next stage is painting the helmets and other painted equipment. I use Vallejo's German Grey for this. Helmets were painted in a variety of colours but the most common one that I've seen is this dark grey colour so this works here. If you wanted to you could paint the helmets in a camouflage pattern as some had cloth helmet covers in the same pattern as the Zellbarn tent half but that's entirely up to you, I just didn't bother. The canvas equipment is the next colour to tackle and I paint this in khaki. So this is the cloth bag for the gas mask case, the bread bag on the hip and also the anklets that replaced the jack boot later in the war. These are the simplified uniforms that the Germans wore from 1943 onwards. However, period photos also show plenty of mixed uniforms, even in 1944 and 45. So mixing early and late uniforms is not really an issue for the late war German figures. I paint the wooden stocks of the rifles and the handles of the SMGs, if I can see them, in beige brown. This is a nice wood colour that looks like oiled wood when it's been ink washed. Then it's time for the water bottles. I'll paint these in flat brown. There are a number of different shades of water bottle cover, from greens all the way through to brown, but I like the contrast of brown against the other greens of the uniform. It just adds some visual interest. Then we have to get more precise as I start to paint black. This is used for the webbing straps and leather equipment such as the ammo pouches, and also I use it on their boots as well. It's worth being neat here and really taking your time, but don't worry if you make mistakes because you can always go back with the other colours and tidy it up anyway after you've done this step. The next stage is painting gun metal on all the metal components of the weapons. So this is the bolts, the barrels, any of the magazines that you can see, along with the SMGs themselves. I also use this to paint the food canteens as well that are sometimes strapped to these figures' backs. It's a little bright at this point, but we are going to dull it down in the ink wash stage. The last stage of the block painting is to paint the bases of the figures. For this, I use flat earth. You don't have to do this as we're going to cover the bases later, but I just find it covers the original white priming and just makes it a bit easier when we get to those stages later on. With the block painting done it's time to break out the Agrax earth shade and slap it all over the figures. This is the best wash on the market as far as I'm concerned and this is always my favourite step as it's messy and it's easy. Just use your brush to ease the wash out of some of the deeper recesses so you don't get it pooling too much. So leave the Agrax to dry overnight or use a hairdryer to speed it up, but just ensure that it's fully dry before moving on to the next highlighting step. I'm not going to go through every single step of this, but I will use the original base colours to highlight various areas such as raised areas on the sculpts. So using flesh colour, I will paint noses, cheeks, the top of the hands. On the uniform I will use the field grey to paint the creases and other raised areas. 
I'll also hit the top of the helmets and painted equipment with German grey again, and finally use khaki just to highlight the canvas equipment. The rest of the figure I'll leave as the wash does a nice job of creating shadows and dulling down the original base coat. This stage is really about making the figures pop on the tabletop and is more than enough for looking at them from three feet away. Then the final stage for the figures is to varnish them, and for this I'm using Vallejo's brush on matte varnish. I normally use Windsor and Newton spray varnish but I've not been able to get hold of any for a while because stocks have been depleted. This stuff is good though, and although it goes on milky, it does dry in a good solid matte. I will go back with a clean brush and remove some of the varnish from the areas where it's pulled just before I let it dry though. Now it's time to turn to the base, and I use Vallejo Scenic Paste for this. This comes in a variety of colours, and feel free to use whichever you want for this particular stage. I just prefer this particular colour. The paste will be covered up with static grass later, but it gives a good base to work from and looks realistic with a brown colour underneath the grass anyway. It goes on really nice and easily. With a brush it can be washed off with water. Just be careful not to get it on the figures themselves while you're doing this. Then I paint a colour around the edge of the base, in this case it's white. I'm doing this purely for our group so that I can tell which company this combat patrol belongs to. You can mark yours in any way you like, but this is what I'm doing here. Just be very careful and neat so you don't get any paint on the top of the base. It doesn't matter so much about the bottom, but the top you really want to try and keep as neat as possible. Once the paste and paint is dry, it's time to finish off the base completely. I paint undiluted PVA glue all over the base and then I'll sprinkle static grass over the top. Some people will use a static grass applicator, but I don't bother. I find that just blowing on the grass once it's in the glue is enough to help it stand up just a little. I'm also going to add grass tufts and other foliage at this stage just to break up the shape of the base and also just add to a bit of visual interest. What you do here is entirely up to you and you could any, add any kind of scenery to these bases. And there we have it, the completed combat patrols. You can use any of these techniques for painting smaller bases of the figures, just use different size bases. You can also add more figures or use less, it's entirely in your hands. I do hope this has been of some help and if you've enjoyed the video and if you aren't please do subscribe and also check out my Patreon if you'd like to support the channel. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more videos in the future.